But the dunk contest is what, like, I studied. Like, I was like, this is it. The reason Vince slammed out contest was so good, he was just head and shoulders above everybody else. It wasn't, uh, as we say, it wasn't a fair fight. I knew he was a favorite. I don't know if the world knew he was a favorite. All he did was say, here come a handful of dunks. Good luck to the rest of you. Right about now, I am thinking about all the times I tried this dunk and it looked awful. As I put that head down, that's when I was like, we got it. Let's go home! Let's go home, ladies and gentlemen! It was over before he even got to the finals. Really, after the first dunk, that was already it. I mean, that, that was the dunk I'll, I'll, I'll always remember. I wanted to set the tone. First dunk. Not a, oh, okay, okay, all right, he's warming up. No, 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 I'm ready, I'm here. Like, if you don't get on this level. The dunk contest is on one side of the floor. And when Vince would come up to dunk, the whole arena would run to the other side. It was that crazy. On this next dunk, I'm trying to show distance while doing a windmill. The nine dunk was a 10 in any other setting. And that first dunk just set a tone in the building. But I said, that is the new 10. So with this one, we had to use a teammate. So we get out there, it's like, all right, what am I doing? I said, stand right here and just, just bounce it and then back up. He's like, man, what, what, is, what are you about to do? I said, you'll see. He incurred an injury dealing with weights in the weight room, so he stitched up in the left hand doing all this. It's over. it's over, ladies and gentlemen. I don't have, like, catchphrases. And I don't know if he heard me or not, but at the same time, he goes like this, it's over. And Kenny going crazy, telling me, it's over, it's over. I just attempted a dunk that I've never tried before. Like, somebody, uh, the dunk guys or somebody, somebody, it's, thank you. <laughs> he pointed up at the Raptors like this, and that forever stuck with me. So when it came down to 2016, we were in Toronto. I made sure I pointed up just like he did, you know, uh, as a tribute to Vince, you know, I had to do it. I am literally making these dunks up right here in front of you tonight and pulling them off. You can't tell me nothing. It's over. You can't tell me nothing. He was a genius in a physical way. And in, in that, like, he could just imagine something and then execute it. You know, these, these unbelievable physical acts that for most people would be like, I gotta do this over and over again. Dunk number four, what do I want to accomplish in this dunk? As I turn around, I said like a quick prayer, okay, don't kill yourself. So when I walk by, I'm just rubbing it last second just to say, you know, just to kind of prep it, you know, for this, cause I don't know if it's gonna hurt or not. And as I go, I just remember taking that one, two, and jumping up high. With his first on the final round. <laughs> I closed my eyes to hold on, and I wanted to hear nothing. I think we were just all in awe of, of what he did that, that night. I just remember landing, like, look around, and the first thing you're going to see is Shaq's face. And it wasn't that, that he just stuck his whole arm in there. It's like he put it there and just kind of gave you a couple of these. Because he knew that people were going to have to catch up with the idea of what he just did. Because it wasn't through the legs. It wasn't the other things that he did. It was this dude just went so high that he basically just jammed his arm into the basket. He said afterwards, he said he did stuff that he had never practiced. <laughs> so it was like creativity on the spot. That's probably why it was so good. He just owned the night. He owned the arena. And to me, it'll always be the single greatest dunk performance that I've ever seen. He's in a class by itself when it comes to dunking. Like, he's simply in a class by... You don't... You can mention whoever you want. It's some great dunkers out here. You can mention all those guys, and I would... Ditto. But when you... Try to compare somebody to Vince Carter? I don't want to hear it. It was a, a whole different environment. He ignited a country with a dunk contest. He put Canadian basketball on the map. 
The Toronto Raptors basketball team hit the court at the Air Canada Centre. The crowd went crazy when the dunk master himself, Vince Carter, made his grand appearance. Vince Sanity, to me, it means the dawn of a new era, the dawn of a new culture. You know, Vince was taking over the league. He was going crazy, man. He had now established that he was more than a dunker. He was scoring yeah, 50 balls, 40 balls, 30 balls, you know, night after night after night. Half man, half amazing, right? Only I think at some point he just became all amazing. You know, with me, like we would be in the locker room and we knew he was getting ready to play against Vince. And all I was just telling the big man, just watch your head. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because he will make you a poster. Vince Sanity is cool. Um, and I think Air Canada is probably the better one, though, because I grew up in Sacramento. Jason Williams was a rookie that year. This was pre-Instagram, pre-House of Highlights, pre-Internet, everything. Um, and so for a guy to be in Toronto, and it's the, I think, fifth year of the franchise even, um, he really opened the door to that whole country. And so I think that's the piece when you look at the legacy that, that really sticks out to me is like how much he could put that city on the map. Even though he might not have been Canadian, like a lot of us kind of just accepted that he might be. Or like we want him to be. And that was that was a big part of I think of a lot of our development um, at that age. With one of his signature slam dunks, Toronto Raptor Vince Carter inaugurated a new state-of-the-art basketball court in Etobicoke today. Carter, through his charity, the Embassy of Hope Foundation, built an NBA-sized court with a pro surface and lighting system valued at $130,000. It's a gift to the kids in the Dixon and Islington neighborhoods. I just hope it, it creates a lot of great basketball players. I mean, we're not, we're not here to really create NBA superstars or anything, but I think just instilling confidence in each, in each and everybody here and giving them some place to play. I'll never forget, we went to the mall. I'm with Vince Carter, and at the time, Vince Carter was like really Vince Carter in Toronto. Like everybody knew Vince Carter, so it was like people looking. And then it got to the point where we had to run out the mall, like run. We went downstairs, got to the car. When we got in front of the mall, we got surrounded by people. Like it was crazy. Like people around the car, Vince, 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 surrounded, but we couldn't drive. And I was just like, Oh, like, I was in awe. My mouth was open, Vince was like, man, I told you this is crazy. It didn't take long before Vince's face was on bus benches, buses, sides of condos, uh, it, just everywhere. Most players are playing for their city or for an adopted fan base. Playing for and having the responsibility of not only being the star for an entire country in terms of that sport, but also for a relatively new franchise that basically was depending on Vince to take them to the promised land. The first time they made the playoffs was because of Vince Carter, what they were going to do in